We will compare the first two chapters of Genesis by asking three sets of questions. The first one has to do with the parameters of Genesis 1. One clue to the limits of Genesis 1 is the inclusio, a framing technique used in the Hebrew Bible to indicate the beginning and end of a literary unit or pericope. Typically, the passage is bracketed by repeated words or phrases. In this instance, the words create and heavens and earth form our literary bookends in Genesis 1-1 and 2-4a. Since the seventh day of creation appears at the beginning of Genesis 2, we obviously cannot depend on the Bible's current chapter and verse divisions to determine the limits of the passage. The second question is concerned with the names for God, as well as any differences in vocabulary, literary style, and theological perspective. God is identified in Genesis 1 as Elohim, God, and in Genesis 2 through 3 as Yahweh Elohim. Some will try to argue that this variation was not the result of different sources, but to avoid redundancy. But if this were the case, then one would expect these two names to appear throughout both chapters, which is not the case. Thus, the differences in God's name supports the contention that Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 through 3 are separate accounts of creation. Both chapters are properly defined as narratives, since they both use the Vav consecutive. But the language of Genesis 1 is highly structured and hymn-like, while Genesis 2 and 3 is more prosaic and story-like. Genesis 2 through 3 also uses wordplay, which is entirely absent in Genesis 1. There are also differences in the way God creates in both chapters. In Genesis 1, God bara creates by calling things into existence, while in Genesis 2, God yetzar fashions or molds. Finally, in Genesis 1, God is presented as the transcendent deity who stands outside the created order, whereas in Genesis 2 through 3, God is imminent and personal such as when God walks in the garden in the cool of the day. So, is Genesis 1 the 30,000-foot flyover and Genesis 2 the detailed view, as often argued? Or were these two accounts placed side by side by later Israelite editors? When we compare both creation accounts in this chart, notice how each chapter begins with similar sounding prologues. We can also see how the transcendent God of Genesis 1 is identified with heavens first and then earth, while the imminent God of Genesis 2 is identified first with earth and then heavens. In the next section, Genesis 1 presents the earth as a watery deep, while Genesis 2 presents the earth as an arid wasteland. God's individual acts of creation begin in the third section, as indicated by a series of Vav consecutives, emphasized here by the English word then. Note how the creation of light is God's first act in Genesis 1, while it is the making of the first human in Genesis 2. Such a structure pretty much disproves the notion that Genesis 1 was originally a single work. The only reasonable conclusion to draw is that at a later stage these distinct accounts of creations were placed side by side in order to give us a more holistic understanding of creation. Thus, the God of Genesis 1 as transcendent is complemented by the God of Genesis 2 through 3 as imminent, and humanity in God's image in Genesis 1 is complemented by humanity in relationship with God and with other human beings in Genesis 2. Rather than taking away from the authority of Scripture, a complementary view of the creation text with all of their differences actually enhances and enriches our understanding of the Bible's message.